We are ready for the next bout of the evening. This is a super bantamweight contest over six rounds. Now, officials for this bout, Judge 1, Michael Nikwe, Judge 2, Mimin Sanakako, and Judge 3, Ishmael Williams. Now, introducing the box of fighting art from the blue corner, and this evening is spotted in all white trunks, black and white shoe, and yellow gloves to match. This is the man with a weight of 123.70 pounds from the Palm Spring Boxing Gymnasium here in Accra with the official record of uh, three fights, one defeat, two wins. This is the man who was born and bred right here in Accra at Jamestown, presenting to you the boxer, Eric Pate. Crossing over to the red corner, spotted in the black and white trunks, black and white shoe, yellow gloves to match tonight with a weight of 121.50 pounds from the Akotoku Academy. This was the gymnasium that nurtured groomed the legs of Azuma Nelson and Ike Basuko Kote. This is the man who is making his debut today as a professional boxer, presenting to you the boxer, Abdul Sayyidu. And the man in charge of this fight is David Mills. David Mills, center referee for this bout, is just about getting ready to issue the last set of instructions to the two boxers before we hit the road running super bantamweight contest scheduled for six rounds between Akotoku Academy's Abdulaziz Seydou and Palm Springs Eric Tete Tete. Promises to be a very interesting bout. Abdulaziz Seydou is uh, making Round his debut, professional one. debut tonight. Tete has fought thrice. Won two and lost one. Special thanks to everyone who's watching us from across the world. And let me say a very, very good evening and thanks for making time to watch all the way in Namibia. Matchmaker. Mubarak, who's almost always with us here in commentary position, is watching the fight night live in Namibia, somewhere in Vintok, I must uh, think. And the good news coming from Namibia is that we are very soon going to be seeing John Quay in action for the WBO title. Details will be coming up later. Anyway, let's get back into the ring and it's Tete Tete in the white. Abdulaziz in the black. And Abdulaziz, I must admit, came into the ring looking very, very unassuming. Of course, his debut appearance in the professional ranks of boxing. Trying to open up there, Abdulaziz. His opponent, Tete, looks a bit quicker of the two. And he's the heavier of the two, Tete, coming into the ring at a weight of 123.7 pounds. The wild miss there from uh, Tete. Not too sure what he had planned to do there. And he's given an opportunity to Abdulaziz to see whether he can break the guard. Good enough for the uh, debutant so far. And Tete tries to close in. Going for the wild punches, missing. And then going in for the clinch. Comes forward yet again. Abdulaziz fighting out of the renowned Akotoku Academy. An academy or a gym that has produced world beaters. Tete. Trying to duck most of the uh, blows that come his way. And then tries to go in for the in-house.
Well, it's been a very good enough uh, opening round for both boxers, especially Abdul. So he's Take making it. sure ah. that he doesn't get closer round. to him. And by so doing, Two. establishing the jab is what Abdul has done so far in round one. Here we go, action in round two. Scheduled for six, this Super Bantamweight contest. Abdul Aziz in the uh, black and white trunks. Taking on uh, Tete Tete. He's in the all white. And Tete now trying to take the fight to Abdul Aziz. Tries to go in for the uh, uppercut. Aziz, that doesn't work. Tete trying to score a couple more points with the uh, body jabs. Good one to the head of uh, Tete. And Prince, we might see Abdul, Sizi, Abdul Aziz getting into trouble because now what Eric is doing is forcing Abdul to fight. And Abdul too has noticed that he's trying as much as possible to swave himself away from that danger zone. But Eric is still probing to make sure Abdul comes into the inside game and fight. Yes, it looks like uh, Tete is sending the fight to his opponent now. Tries to work on the body, some hefty punches. Going in there, David Mills watching closely. Keeps coming forward, uh, Tete. Prince, is the reason that Eric Tete keeps coming forward is that Abdul Aziz punches is not getting any significance on Eric, uh, Eric Tete, should I say. Because if a boxer is punching and you can see that the opponent is still coming through in that punches, that, that tells you that the punches are not having any worry on that boxer. So I feel... Abdul Aziz's punches should be a, a little bit heavier so that when it hits Eric Tete, he can feel it. But Eric Tete is not feeling anything. He's still coming forward through those punches. Yeah, I see him taking all those punches in his uh, guard. Lots of instructions coming to uh, Abdul Aziz from his corner. Don't forget he's making his debut in the professional ranks. Tete clearly the aggressive one in this uh, bout. And the bell goes for the end of the round. Because see, uh, Sedu is having round. in the ring. But Three. I think that the, the, the number of uh, ring experience that Eric has had yeah. is, is telling on, uh, uh, on the game. As much as I believe that um, Sedu has won both rounds. It's not get, it's not getting it uh, easier at all. And if he doesn't take care, uh, by the third, fourth round, he will, he will be worn out. And Eric, with a strategy, can, can, can win the fight. Eric, well, Eric will continue. Strategy, he has yeah. a lot of energy. Mm. Continuing with that explosive nature of his, Eric. And uh, in uh, Abdul goes for the uh, clinch. A fighter that he is, Eric is not scared to come forward. Good shot to the head, and Abdul Prince, still stands I, I, tall. I think I think um, um, Seydou is not doing that that too well. He has a reach. I don't know why he's also trying to go in fighting with uh, Eric whose uh, uh, advantage is in the mm. infighting. Yeah. Uh, because he's not afraid of uh, the, the, the kind of uh, blows uh, Seydou is throwing at him. So he chases him. If you, had such, you have such a long reach, what you have to do is to do the jabs, move to empty spaces, and have control over the game. But, but I don't know what, what, what the problem of Seydou is. 
obviously willing, roaring and ready to go. Eric Tete Tete. And a little bit of a caution there from uh, David Mills, uh, centre referee. Let's get on with it, he says. Well, although he may be the explosive type, Abdul Aziz is also working his way. Clawing back the pride and gaining a little, uh, a little bit of a intimidatory escape routes, as it were. Eric not giving up, clearly. Prince, in as much as you look at Eric having a lot of experience, but Seydou is giving Eric a lot of tough, tough, tough time. You could see that what uh, Derek said, Seydou is relying on his longer reach. What he's doing now is he punch jab, make sure he probes with a jab, then he moves away, intimidating Eric. And Eric is always coming forward. What I'm afraid for Eric is that he might be coming forward thinking he can eat the blows of Seydou. But one punch, one counter punch, if he doesn't get that defense well and it hit the chin clean, we might see Eric hitting the canvas. What Eric needs to do now is to make sure, get in the inside game and get an override hand that if it can hit Seydou's chin, because Seydou, what he's doing now is trying to toy his opponent. And in so doing, you can get your defense open. And if that counter attack override hand gets it clean, then you're gonna have yourself being punched clean. Be throwing blows which are unnecessary, Round. and that will not score him a point, and he might lose at the end of the day. Round four it is in this bout, scheduled for six. And Eric Tete Tete is looking so so confident. Let's see how the two, the last two rounds will go in this uh, bout. Bell has gone already. Lots of feedback on social media. Looks like everybody seems to be interested in wanting to know more about the WBO fight, which has been worked on, I should say, for John Quay. John Quay has been one of the best prospects we've seen in the uh, Deluxe Professional Boxing League. And already has a WBO Africa title in the offing for him. Matchmaker Mubarak Yusuf Nano watching closely from Namibia where it looks like the good work done by the Ghana Boxing Authority under Abraham Nikwe seems to be blossoming like wildfire and sooner rather than later we will see John Quay a product of the Deluxe Professional Boxing League and managed by IMAX Media Promotions get a shot at a title. It's a tough battle in the ring now as both boxers would not want to give an inch. Tete still comes forward riding on that uh, high level of confidence of his. One will get the feeling that with this explosive nature of Tete, tiredness will start creeping in. It's just the uh, fourth out of the sixth round. Or out of uh, six rounds. Tries to go in there once again. Carefully planning out such a strategy that he gets into trouble, he clinches. Abdul Aziz still stands tall. Now I give and take a fair and the neutral corner. What did he wait for on that occasion?
Prince, the fight is really getting intense there. You can see that Eric Tete is growing out of frustration. And Seydu is really loving it. But what Eric needs to know is that as he's getting in confidence and growing in confidence, Seydu is really, really reading him very, very well. And any defense error that Eric does, Seydu is capitalizing on it. Eric knows that now that it stands now, Seydu is winning by points. So he's really, really much the aggressor as compared to Seydu. But I mean, Eric, on him. but hey, you have judges there. Judges are scoring by points. Any points that hits you clean, the judge is going to score you by points. And I feel Eric Tete should know this better than anyone else in the ring. So he should be much as possible. Make sure his punches are really hitting clean. Or else, Abdul is going to take away the points and Eric might be furious, but that is how boxing is. Boxing is combat sport. You need to score points by doing what? By punching clean. And if Eric is throwing punches but is not hitting clean, then I bet he should tweak his tactics going into these rounds. Here we go. Round five is scheduled for six. Super bantamweight contest between Abdul Aziz Seydou and Eric Tete. Tete. Abdul has done pretty, pretty well, I must say. Making his debut appearance tonight. Tete in white. And whether dyed her. The aggression seems to have uh, gone down a few notches from uh, Tete. Well, Prince, I feel what Eric needs to do now. He has tried and has a possible to go in upstairs of uh, 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 Seydou's face. But what he needs to do now, tweak it a little bit. And what I mean by doing that is go to the body of Seydou. You know, as we started, I've not seen Eric attacking the body of Seydou. And that is something we want to see. Eric needs to attack the body of Seydou. And let's see if Seydou can handle the body punches from Eric. If he still goes to the upstairs, Seydu is still going to toy him, move around and jab and make sure he collect points from the punches as hitting clean on his opponent. Tough fight it has been this one. Tete still comes forward. Abdul clearly is now losing gas. Just walking across us here in commentary position is George the Red Tiger Ashi. Won the Africa Boxing Union Super Featherweight title, the UBC Super Featherweight title, and Commonwealth Lightweight titles. Was also a challenger for the WBA International Lightweight title when he fought against Emmanuel Tego. And a Commonwealth Super Featherweight title contender against Kevin Mitchell. And again, goes in for the uh, clinch. And clearly, Abdul Aziz, at this stage, he needs to keep his uh, balance, keep his momentum, trying to toy Tete now into uh, making mistakes and then trying to nip him. That's a wild miss there from uh, Tete. From what we've seen in the first five rounds, Okay, try it as much as possible. Six, Stay on his toes and, and make sure if the opponent is coming in an inside fighting game, he counterattacks him, use the jab to probe him and blind him so that Eric does not have any significant thing to do. Round six up your way and let's see if it's going to be explosive one. Well, it's the sixth and the last round in this Super Bantamweight contest is scheduled. For the first six rounds. Connoisseurs of the sport have done a lot of talking as the boxers go in. Now it's a give and take affair. And Tete fighting so very hard, trying to keep his, his flow and his momentum. He's not interested in the uh, 
clutching again from Abdul. And referee gives him a warning. He comes forward once again. Looking very bullish at the stage. But I must confess and I must admit, he's missed most of the, uh, the, 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 the blows he's thrown. You see, Prince, that is what a lot of fans here are not really noticing. They think the swinging and hands of Eric Tete is really scoring something. Yeah. But that's what I keep saying. Judges are there. They are really watching the kind of punches that are hit and clean. You can be swinging and the fans will be cheering you up. But ask yourself, are you hitting it clean? If it's not hit clean, judges are not going to score you. So he needs to make sure what he's throwing and swinging is hitting clean on his opponent to score points. It's the sixth and the last round of this bout. And my, it's getting interesting as we get to the uh, end. Into the corner they go. There's a brief clinch. Clinch has worked quite well for the debutant, Aziz Seydou. And I'm sure at certain stages, Tete will be, would look quite and seem frustrated by virtue of the fact that he's not getting through, he's not landing the big ones, and uh, all his opponent is doing is trying to buy time by going in for the clinch. Well, he lands a big one now, Abdul Aziz. That's good enough. Tete, that's a clarion and a wake-up call for him. Keeps coming forward, though. Ducking here and there, he misses a wild one. Tete misses again, misses a third time. And Abdul does well to claw back some pride. Fans will urge him on. Abdul is now on the offensive. Tete seems to be in trouble. He's at the receiving end now. Good punches from, Tet, uh, from Abdul Aziz. Wow. Prince Ahmad confessed that is smart and intelligent boxing from the debutant Abdul Aziz. 3-4 combination and they are all hitting clean. You ask yourself, Eric Tete, what have you done so far to hit clean in this round? The debutant so far has done the best performance I've seen tonight. Couldn't agree with you more, especially the last round. Quite a tactical switch by Abdul Aziz on that occasion. Suddenly opened up and we saw the punishment he gave to Eric Tete. And, and again, from the replay, clearly shows Tete had his moments, but when Abdul opened up, he was in trouble. See that fans were really cheering him up because what he was doing was he paying was, a lot of significance on his opponents. Fight. All right, let's go we to Mohamed Amin Lamte for, for the official verdict. Uh, this boxer should get ready for the next bout of the evening. Musa Lawson from the Sonia Boxing Gym and Evans Owari from the Panix Boxing Gym should get ready. Very, very interesting bout. We are now waiting for the verdict. Coming up next is one of the boxers who has also endeared himself to the fans here, Musa Lawson. He fights out of the Sonia Boxing Gym and he's taking on Evans Owari. Evans Owari is from the Panix Boxing Gym. Highlight of the night, by the way, will be Fit Square's Elvis Ahoga taking on Samson Amwak of the gym. That is expected to be a cracker. Prince, I love that boxer, Elvis Ahoga, a.k.a. Buffalo Soldier. I mean, that guy, when he's coming into the ring, you should fear him. No, we All right, the over to Amin Lamptey now. Are you ready now. for the verdicts? Are you ready for the verdicts? Now, put your hands together for the boxes. Let's put hands together for them. Now, Judge 1, Michael Nikwe, scored the bout 59 to 55. Judge 2, me Mensa Akako scored about 60 to 55. Judge 3, Williams scored about 60 to 56. So by a unanimous point decision, presenting to you the winner, ladies and gentlemen, welcome the boxer, Abdul Aziz.
That is very interesting. Abdulaziz, congratulations. Thank you. How, how do you feel? Oh, I feel great. You feel great. You want me to hear more or you can have fun, sir? Me da if I say French, my friend only baby only support me. Me da my friend I'm not sure. She can clean on, can she? Aba, you coaches, can manager. Me da my French. Thank you very much. So thank you very much. Now let.